Hey, what's up everyone, TJ here. Today we're back out at Copper and we're taking a look at the Jones Mind Expander Twin. I've spent a few days on this board, so we'll use some footage from other days I've tested it as well. But in this video, I'm gonna go through all the tech and I'll share my thoughts on how it feels out on snow as well. So let's get out there. All right, let's run through the tech. So the Mind Expander Twin is a powder twin style snowboard, definitely a more rare category. It is a true twin, gonna ride exactly the same in either direction, but has a lot of features and tech built into it that are designed to help the board float in powder. You're gonna find Jones Surf Camber Rocker in this snowboard. It is a camber dominant board, so it's gonna come through with that more energetic, stable, uh, precise feel to it compared to a full rocker dominant snowboard. But then you have some nice rocker sections outside the bindings going out all the way to the tip of the snowboard. And it's like a nice shallow planing rocker. It doesn't have abrupt tips, which is something that's nice to see in powder boards. Uh, very similar to what you'll see and the Mind Expander, one of my favorite powder boards, um, but you're gonna find that same shape in both the nose and the tail on this one. You're also gonna find Jones 3D Contour Base. So it kinda has a 3D spoon shape in the nose and tail, I think is the best way to describe it. And that's gonna have a couple benefits. On hard pack, it's gonna make the board very catch free. Uh, so if you're leaning into the nose or tail doing butters or anything like that, uh, it's gonna be much less likely that you're gonna catch your edge. And in powder, it's gonna give the board a smoother, more efficient glide and help displace that snow more efficiently to help uh, keep your speed up and also just maneuver around that soft snow a little bit better. So definitely one of the coolest and most noticeable features in the Mind Expander Twin. Something else built into this board that's gonna help you out as you're out there exploring is their traction tech. So it's basically added contact points throughout the side cut, kind of like a serrated edge. You're gonna get multiple contact points when you are on ice or more firm snow. It's gonna help to bite down on multiple sections throughout the board and just give you better grip and help keep you in control when you're on those more treacherous firm conditions. This is a softer flexing, more playful kind of snowboard. And Jones threw in some flax and basalt stringers to help give the board more energy. Also gonna have some nice dampening features to mellow out vibrations out there if you're going through some choppier snow. Similar benefit to carbon fiber, but just a more sustainably sourced material. And other than that, also just wanna highlight that this board does run a sintered base, which is known to be harder, faster, and more durable compared to an extruded base. But you do wanna make sure you're waxing this board often to maintain a nice, fast, consistent glide out there. So that's it for the tech. We're gonna get these laps going. We'll check back in here in a little bit and give you some feedback on how it's riding. All right guys, so for reference, I'm riding this board in a 154. I'm five foot 10 and I weigh around 150 pounds. And as far as the flex goes, I'd say this is definitely a little bit more of a playful snowboard. Flex is a little bit on the softer side of medium. And with this camber profile with the rocker that you have going on in the tips, it does have a more playful feel in the nose and tail, uh, feeling a little bit more sturdy through the center through that camber section. Another thing with the rocker tips is that it allows you to get more leverage if you do lean into the nose or tail for presses on rails or doing butters and flat ground tricks. So you can get a little bit of flex and uh, get that press going with very little effort. And as you really lean into it and get your weight out closer to the contact points, it starts to feel even more playful and you can get a lot of flex out of this board. So uh, definitely a little bit loose, a little bit washy in the tips, has a little bit more stability through the center to help you out as out there exploring maybe charging through some variable snow like we have out here today but uh something i noticed especially when you're leaning into the nose or tail is that 3d contour does give it a very loose feel for flat ground tricks something that i think you'd probably get used to after a few days i'm definitely feeling more comfortable with it throughout the day here but those first couple of laps just felt very loose in the nose and tail so it's nice because it's really catch free and you feel like you can really trust it uh, but it also kind of changes the way that you balance that spoon 3D shape is a different feel uh, from some other 3D shapes out there for these flat ground tricks. 
Copper does have a pretty awesome park build out here at the moment. And this being a true twin definitely is a very freestyle and park friendly snowboard. I have the bindings mounted up on the freestyle inserts today. So we're centered in between the side cut and a couple of things with park riding. I think this is a little bit more of a jib leaning snowboard just cause you are able to get so much flex out of it if you want to. It's helpful for trying those more tactical tricks or trying to get pressed out on features. And I think the width uh, is also something that's helpful. This board out of 154 has a 26 centimeter waist width. So I think that gives you a little bit more to work with as you're locking into features, making that feel a little bit more comfortable and doesn't feel weird sliding sideways on features either. This had a very comfortable feel in the park out here today. Although I gotta say it is extremely cold and it is a challenging day for riding park, but uh, hopefully we got some good clips for the review here. Um, but I, I wouldn't hesitate to hit rails on this board if you are, you know, doing some park laps. For jumps, it's pretty comfortable as well, but probably geared more towards the small and medium sized features just because it does lack a little bit of stability in the tips with that softer flex and that rocker profile. So uh, if you're hitting the larger features, definitely try to land bolts. And I think as far as getting in the air goes, the idea with this board is definitely geared more towards natural features, finding drops, spinning, landing in the powder, you know, regular or switch, I think is the biggest benefit you're gonna find uh, as far as freestyle stuff goes with the Mind Expander Twin. As far as carving goes, I think the biggest compromise is gonna be with stability. This definitely isn't a high speed charging kind of board. As you get it up to those higher speeds, you're gonna to start to find some chatter in the nose and tail. You're gonna see those vibrations going on. It's not gonna be able to hang on to turns uh, quite as well and power through more variable choppy snow either, just because of that softer flex and the significant rocker in the nose and tail. But this is still a pretty fun board to carve with at more moderate speeds. I think it's got a few things that help out with that first is the width at 26 centimeters with the 154 you can go for those more aggressive edge angles and really lay into those turns do those more euro carve style turns if you're into that uh, definitely helps prevent that heel and toe drag could be a nice benefit for those of you with larger boot sizes just in general uh, it also has a fairly tight side cut. So the 154 is right at 6.9 meters. And I gotta say, going from a more average side cut, like a 7.5, 7.6, down to the 6.9 is noticeable. And I think that does make this board a lot more fun at those slower speeds, being able to throw yourself into those tighter arc turns and just play around and have more fun when you're not mobbing. And one other thing that was really noticeable is the traction tech. We have really grippy snow out here today, but I have ridden this board in pretty much straight ice conditions. And you can really feel that pressure isolate along those contact points and give you a lot more control and a lot more confidence in your turns when you are on that icy, more firm snow. So uh, definitely a big standout on this and makes this board a lot more versatile when it comes to more all mountain type of riding or just riding in firm conditions in general. And the last thing I wanna talk about is how this board feels in powder. We got a little bit of fresh snow out here today, but I have taken this out in the backcountry multiple times, gotten it into some really deep zones. And I gotta say that it does float extremely well. And every time I've taken it into powder, I've left the stance centered in the side cut because you know, to me, the idea with this board is to be able to ride powder switch, to be able to hit uh, natural features and land in powder switch. Um, so you're not making that compromise like you do with the more directional boards but still offer a nice benefit for float. And I think this board does that really well. As far as the features in the board that do give it that extra float, I think the biggest one is probably just the width to give the board so much more surface area. That combined uh, with the rocker tips, you got this nice shallow planing nose to help stay on top of the snow. That 3D contour base is also gonna give you a more efficient glide in powder. And one other thing is that it actually has a pretty short effective edge. So the contact points actually have a pretty significant amount of nose and tail outside the contact points. So on hard pack, you're gonna get a quick snappy maneuverable feel out of it. It's gonna ride a little bit shorter than your typical 154 because of that shorter effective edge. But then when you get it in soft snow, you're using the entire length of the board from tip to tail. That extra surface area and that shallow rocker uh, really do help the tips stay out of the soft snow. So obviously still gonna be a bit of a compromise compared to a true directional powder focused or free ride focused snowboard. But if you are looking for that 
true twin board that offers a benefit in powder, something you can take out on those deeper days, go looking for natural features and not be worried about having to ride switch or land switch in soft snow. The Mind Expander Twin is gonna be a great choice for that. So as far as rider in mind, I'd say this is gonna be better suited for more intermediate to advanced riders looking for that more specialty twin snowboard. Or if you're someone who just has a larger boot size, you want a wider twin, this could be a good option to look at as well. Uh, it's a very playful snowboard overall, has a loose feel for butters, uh, still very park friendly, but uh, when I look at this board, I'm thinking natural features, trying to find drops in the powder and uh, not be worried about riding switch. So if that's something you're looking for, check out the Mind Expander Twin. I'm gonna have this board linked down in the description below if you wanna read more about it. If you've had a chance to ride this board, let us know what you think about it down in the comments. You can leave any questions for me down there as well. Drop a like if you got some value out of this video. Subscribe if you're new here. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you in a new review next time. Take care, everybody.